Hi, this is Ed Ridiger, and I am absolutely delighted you're tuning in to hear another one of my sermons. Now, I'm preaching this sermon in my church in Sligo, Pennsylvania. My church is Sligo Presbyterian Church. And Sligo, Pennsylvania is in the northwest part of the, the Commonwealth. It's about 10 miles south of Clarion, and Clarion is right on Interstate 80. And I'm preaching this as part of a series we began a few weeks ago. So, listen for the word of God. Well, this morning we've entered the month of February, which means that Christmas is less than 11 months away. Therefore, if you want your Christmas cards to arrive on time, well, you know where I'm going. Anyway, we've moved past January, and now we're only a couple of weeks before the beginning of Lent. You know, the time of the year when we start to focus on Easter. It also means we've only got a couple of messages left in the series we started three weeks ago entitled God and Money, Five Principles for Handling Our Possessions. Now, to this point, we've already talked about the importance of offering thanks and giving generously and seeking contentment. And with each one of these principles, we explored how they might actually be done. And this morning, we're going to continue this by considering the fourth principle for handling what we've got. And now I'm talking about working hard. And you know, it's interesting, as I was thinking about it, I remembered something that happened this last week, you know, an event that I believe offers the perfect example of what we won't be talking about this morning. Now, just in case you all don't know the event I've got in mind, this last Thursday was... Groundhog's Day. And frankly, I'm not sure there's a better example of what I won't be dealing with this morning than good old Punxsutawney Phil. I mean, give me a break. He's not exactly the poster boy for hard work. Good night, nurse. He only works one day a year. And on that one day, his only job is to go out of his burrow and look for his shadow. I mean, even my Uncle Steve could have done that and did, at least when he was sober. But that's not all. According to the official Punxsutawney Groundhog Club website, for the other 364 days, 365 this year, he gets a steady diet of vegetables. His tastes change much as humans do. For a time, he, really, he will really enjoy carrots. Then a month later, he might not want them at all. A few things that seem to remain constant is kale, sweet potatoes, corn on the cob, and bananas. Now that sounds like a typical dinner at the Rudiger house when I was growing up. With the bananas on top of the pudding, of course. But even that's not all. Phil also has a wife named Phyllis. I'm telling you, that's one lucky rodent. And this year, since he didn't see his shadow, I think we can all say with complete confidence, he has it made in the shade. But of course, that's him, not us. And so this morning, as we continue to talk about how we might better handle our possessions, including what may be the most precious of, of all, and now I'm talking about time, we're going to look at hard work, an idea that most of us accept, but don't necessarily connect with being a Christian. As a matter of fact, based on what they say, I think a lot of believers sound as though hard work isn't really important at all. I mean, for them, if you have enough faith, you'll get whatever you need and want, whether you work for it or not. It just comes down from God. Now, that's what they seem to believe. And even though it's often held up as one of those American virtues, we're, and we're taught to look down on those who, had, who have had everything given to them, let's face it, most of us have kind of a soft spot for some celebrities who seem to play a whole lot more than they actually work. I mean, this seems to be our world nowadays. But of course, it isn't the kind of world we see in the Bible. 
And for that reason, as we continue to focus on handling our possessions, we're going to talk about hard work. And as we've done the last three weeks, we're going to focus on, we're going to, we're going to start by looking at why, you know, why it's important to work hard, and then we'll consider how, how we might actually do it. Now, that's the plan. And so let's spend a little time thinking about why it's important to work hard. In other words, when we see so many folks get so much by doing so little, why should we make this a priority in our lives? I mean, why should we place a high value on working hard? Now, given what we often end up feeling, I think that's a reasonable question. And I'll tell you, when we look into the Bible, I believe there are actually three really solid answers. For instance, first, I think hard work is the most obvious way we can support ourselves. Simply put, the work we do enables us to provide for both ourselves and our families. And I'll tell you, I think that's as true today as it's always been. You see, in spite of all those examples of lazy people we hear about who seem to get it all, I actually think life is pretty tough for folks who, for whatever reason, can't work. I mean, isn't that why most people have come and are coming to the United States so they can get a job and support themselves and their families? That's what they do when they get here, isn't it? I think so. And I'll tell you, we can also see the same thing in Scripture. For example, just listen to a couple of, of little sayings from the book of Proverbs that convey this same message. Work hard and you will be a leader. Be lazy and you will end up a slave. No matter how much you want, laziness won't help a bit. But hard work will reward you with more than enough. Now that's what it says. And so even though playing the lottery may be fun, and finding out you had a long lost uncle who left you a fortune in his will may be fortuitous, if we want to have food on our tables, and clothes on our backs and roofs over our heads, we, we're probably going to need to do something to get them. And in that way, we really do work to support ourselves. And that's the first reason I think it's important. But for a Christian, that's not all. Because second, through our hard work, we can honor God. And that's another important reason for us doing it. Now, let me, let me tell you what I mean. When we use the gifts and talents and opportunities we've been given, we're actually showing appreciation and respect and gratitude to the one who gave them. It's like wearing the sweater you, your wife uh, gave you for, as a present or eating the fruitcake Aunt Irma brought to the Christmas party. In fact, in a real sense, our work enables us to honor God in a way that's much deeper and more profound than just our words. Because we're using what he gave. And I'll tell you, I think that's something the Apostle Paul understood when he wrote the, his letter to the Colossians. Now, before I read it, I need to tell you that he was writing to this to slaves. But I think the point he was making is just as applicable today as it was back then. This is what he wrote. Slaves, you must always obey your earthly masters. Try to please them at all times and not just when you think they're watching. Honor the Lord and serve your masters with your whole heart. Do your work willingly as though you were serving the Lord himself and not just your earthly master. In fact, the Lord Christ is the one you are really serving and you know he will reward you. You see, see, regardless of where you live or what you do, I think the point is the same. When we're purposeful and when we're diligent and when we're busy doing what God has equipped us to do, we're not only taking care of ourselves, we're also, also honoring Jesus Christ. Therefore, we're really working for him. And for me, that's the second reason it's important. And third, when we work hard, we're able to help others. You see, the work we do enables us to assist those who might be in big trouble if we don't. And I think that's really important. I mean, we don't live in isolation. God has put us in communities where the needs of others should trump our own wants, right? And let's get real. 
There are plenty of people who for whatever reason lack what we have. And I'm talking about the very people Christ called us to help. You know, the hungry and the thirsty, the naked and the stranger, the sick and the prisoner. That's just the way it is. But then we can use our work to help them. Either directly or through what we're able to earn. And I'll tell you, I think that was the point Paul, the Apostle Paul was getting at when he closed his letter to the Ephesians with this brief instruction. Be honest and work hard, so you will have something to give to people in need. The work we do can help others. And along with supporting ourselves and honoring God, for me, that's why hard work is important. And how might we do it? I mean, how might we get into the habit of working hard? Well, I think it comes down to making two decisions that can change everything. You see, first, we can decide to work with effort. And I'm talking about working with energy and with focus and with what used to be called good old-fashioned elbow grease. In other words, we can decide that we're going to do the absolute best we can with what we have. Man, we can use what we've got. And I'll tell you something else. I think that's exactly what Paul was getting at when he wrote this in his second letter to the Thessalonians. We also gave you this rule, if you don't work, you don't eat. Now, we learned that some of you just loaf around and won't do any work, except the work of a busybody. So, for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask and beg these people to settle down and start working for a living. You know, when you get right down to it, nothing in life really happens until we make the decision to do it. And that applies to work just like it does to everything else. You see, in my opinion, hard work begins when we make the conscious choice to get up and to move forward. I mean, that cake is not going to be made unless we mix up the ingredients and put them in an oven. And that house is not going to be built until we pick up a hammer and start driving a few nails. And I'll tell you from personal experience, as I was reminded yesterday, that sermon is not going to be written until I set myself down, turn off the music, and start to write. I'm telling you, none of this is going to happen until we decide we're going to put forth the effort to do it. And I think that's the first decision we're going to need to make if we're serious about working hard. And second, to actually do it, I think we also must decide to work with intelligence. In other words, we need to decide, if possible, to do the things we already understand, and if necessary, to understand the things we need to do. But to do that, we also need to understand both ourselves and the job. And for me, that's what it means to work with intelligence. And if I believe that my ability to do what I can do is actually a gift from God, just putting that gift to use is also an act of faith. And you know, the idea of doing the work we've been be we're best able to do, man, that kind of thing goes all the way back to Moses and the children of Israel wandering around in the wilderness before they ever entered the promised land. For example, this is what Mo God said to Moses about how he should build the place where the Lord would be present with his people. He said, I have chosen Bezalel from the Judah tribe to make the sacred tent and its furnishings. Not only have I filled him with my spirit, but I have given him wisdom and made him a skilled craftsman who can create objects of art with gold, silver, bronze, precious stones, and wood. I've also appointed Ohaliab from the tribe of Dan to work with him. And I've also given skills to those who will help them make everything exactly as I've commanded you. You see, for God, regardless of the amount of effort, the amount of energy a person is willing to put forth. Not everyone could build his special tent. To do that, to do the work God has wanted done, man, that would take skill and experience. And I think that applies to us as well. In order for us to do what God has called and equipped us to do, we've got to claim the talent we have and frankly recognize the talent that we don't. For example, even though you may be the best machinist around, 
you might make a lousy ballet instructor, regardless of how much effort you put in or care in arranging your tutu. And you might type 70 words a minute, but still be clueless when you're looking down a clogged drain. And I'll tell you, I have the ability to put together a sermon and lead a Bible study. But don't call me if your car won't start. Not if you want to get to any place soon. We need to recognize our strengths and our weaknesses. And then not only claim the strengths, but also develop and refine. And listen to this. Develop and, respond, uh, develop and refine those strengths as much as we can. Then and only then will we be skilled craftsmen. And for me, that's working with intelligence. And along with deciding to put forth the effort, that's the second decision I believe we may need to make if we're serious about working hard. You see, that's how it's done. Of course, right now, I'm talking about us and not Punxsutawney Phil. I think we can agree that his is pretty much a workless life. Still, all is not necessarily rosy for America's favorite prognosticating rodent and his ilk. Not only his, is his life expectancy only 11 years, in spite of the elixir of life he's supposed to be taking, as I was doing a little research on the Punxsutawney Groundhog Club, you know, the place where I got information on Phil's lifestyle, I found some pretty disturbing things that may cast a shadow over all groundhogs. You see, the group was founded not just to celebrate a single day in February. That's what it kind of does now, but that's not why it was founded. It also sponsored what they called the Groundhog Feast, which took place annually in September. The Groundhog Feast. The flavor has been described as a cross between pork and chicken. They were literally serving groundhogs. But don't worry, according to Wikipedia, the ultimate source of all truth, the feast did not attract enough outside interest and the practice was discontinued. Who'd have thought? Score one for the groundhogs. But as it relates to hard work, well, despite the lack of outside interest, this practice should definitely continue. You see, when you get right down to it, it's important because it's a way we can support ourselves and that we can honor God and that we can help others. And I'll tell you, for that reason, we should decide to do it with both, with both effort and intelligence. And if we do, we'll be using hard work as another way to handle maybe the most valuable possession we have. And I'm talking about our time. Amen. Well, thank you for listening. I hope you found the sermon meaningful. Uh, of course, if you're ever in the neighborhood and... Uh, uh, my church is Sligo Presbyterian Church in the little town of Sligo, about 10 miles south of Clarion, and Clarion's right on Interstate 80. If you're ever in the neighborhood on a Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, come on by Sligo Presbyterian Church and worship with us. I think you'll have a good time. Of course, if you're around here on a Wednesday morning at 10.30 or Thursday evening at 6.30, come on by and join us at one of our Bible studies. Maybe join us at both of the studies. I think you'll get a lot out of them. And so, until I talk with you again, I want you to remember that you are a child of God and that God loves you very much. Goodbye for now.